Alrighty. So this is Connor with a video on finite wings and uh, how we analyze finite wings, which is using Prandtl lifting line theorem, abbreviated PLLT. So we're going to start out with a quick review of finite wings, what they mean, some of their geometry. I won't talk about all of this, but you can uh, pause and write this kind of stuff down in your crib sheet or go verify it yourself. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so we have our finite wing here, right? Span B, root chord, tip chord, uh, plan form area. There's uh, we're we're kind of being, you know, we can we're letting this be pretty variable. We're not really, you know, putting too many restrictions on our finite wings at this point, right? We're even saying that they can have geometric twist, right? So that's this guy right here, where the wing is literally twisted. There is a different physical angle of attack at different places in the wing. Right, so I've written alpha. I should write alpha geo. Alpha geo is a function of the span wise direction y. It can change with y. All right. Similarly, we have, um, or sorry, continuing with that, we uh, this is often a vocab word that likes to come up, but we have wash in, where we have a higher uh, geometric angle of attack at the tip, and then we have wash out, where there's a higher angle of attack at the root. Similarly, we have the aerodynamic twist, which is where we have varying camber along the wing, right? And if we have different cambers, we have, we have different zero lift angles of attack, right? So this effectively says that we have a alpha L equals zero is a function of the span wise direction, right? So this is very general. We have a lot of different options here with finite wings. All right. So moving forward. Finite wings have um, a little bit, a little bit of issue with finite, or sorry, uh, induced drag, um, where wingtip vortices uh, cause us to lose out on some of that lift we were getting with our infinite wings. All right, and so I have a little diagram here of kind of what the original. This is our infinite. Um, wing, where we don't have uh, any. Um, tip effects, right? And then we have our, I have this lower diagram right here where I've drawn wingtip vortices on it. And what you can think of is you can imagine, um, what I like to think of when I'm imagining what's causing these wingtip vortices is you have, you know, some pressure differential P upper and P lower. And you know that P lower, I'll abbreviate that PL, greater than PU, right? Because we end up with this net, uh, this lift, right? It would say we have these optimal lifting conditions. When we have that, um, and then we take it uh, over here, we basically have this little path on the side where air in this lower pressure area, or sorry, this higher pressure area, has the opportunity to leak up on top, it, it wants to go to the lower pressure area, right? It, it that's that's how these balance out. Uh, high pressure moves to low low pressure, right? There's a pressure differential moves the flow, right? And at the tips is where we have they have this uh, the flow has this opportunity to leak out on top, right? And we end up with these curly Q vortices that kind of leak off the leak off the sides as a result of that. Furthermore. We have, and like I said before, we lose out on some of that, that nice lift we were getting, right? So originally, we have this geometric angle of attack, right? Which is the angle between our chord line, which I have in red, chord line, to our original V infinity, right? And one of the ways that I've had this explained to me, uh, and I think aircraft dynamics, that's ASEN 3128, uh, dives into this a little further just because uh, most I think everything in that class has to do with finite more practical uses of aerodynamics so um, Essentially what you can imagine is you can imagine that if you have some original velocity and then you have so this is our V infinity original and then you have like a vortex coming down on top of it you end up with this vertical component to it which just dips your V infinity down just a little bit. So you have this new effective V infinity, which I'll call V infinity prime, right? 
And so I've, I've, you know, I've literally just redrawn this diagram over uh, on the left here. So I'll, I'll move back to this one. This is the vertical component of the wingtip vortex velocity, right? And when we just drop our, our free stream velocity down a little bit, we have this new angle. Uh, it, it drops by angle alpha i, where alpha i is our induced angle of attack, AOA. Right, and so now that we have a we have like this modified free stream, right, and we know that our lift is really uh, any lift we care about is in reference to the free stream, right? It's all about relative relative velocities for us, uh, vector directions, stuff like that. Um, when we when we look at the difference in uh, angle between our new this is like our new free stream. Draw that a better color. This is like our new free stream direction now. We've kind of lost out on some of that big geometric angle of attack now, right? We subtracted this bit off, and now we're left with our effective angle of attack, right? So I'll write this out mathematically. What this boils down to is alpha geometric is equal to alpha um, effective plus alpha L equals zero, all right? And um, this is kind of a... This is a helpful thing that I'll, we'll, we'll use later down the line. It's, it's a nice relationship to have, especially when we use Prandtl lifting line theorem because uh, in PLLT, um, uh, it's essentially relating these three quantities together based on um, the effects that the uh, wingtips have on, you know, inducing our... You know what? Look what I've done here. Alpha induced. That was a close one. Anyway. Uh, you know, because our, our wing tips are what give us our alpha induced, and then, you know, that'll, you know, our alpha geometric is a function of, uh, uh, you know, if we have, we can have geometric twist. And then there's plenty of other aerodynamic properties that, you know, can go into, uh, go into that. So these, this is a very handy relationship. All right. And then real quick, I want to talk about, um, so if we had our original... And I'll draw this perpendicular to the chord, or sorry. So lift, originally, and you know what? I feel like a dunce now because I've drawn my lift vector perpendicular to the chord. This is normal. The lift is perpendicular. Um, draw it over here. The lift is perpendicular to the free stream. Very silly. All right. Moving on, okay, so we have our original lift, and this is gonna get a little crowded, and I apologize for that. Our original lift, come on now, our original lift, right, normal to our original free stream direction, right, which is this guy right here. And now we've tilted our free stream, right, so now our new lift, our new lift vector is pointed um, slightly off, so now we have something this is going to look, I'm just going to exaggerate just this just a little bit. All right, this is our new lift vector. And I'm not going to call it L prime because that's lift per unit span. So I'll just call it, <sighs> I have no idea what to call it. But my notes say L prime, so you know what, why don't I stick with it? So we have our original L and our new L. And we know that the actual free stream is still moving in this direction, right? We just have this new, like, effective free stream in the context, from the point of view of the wing, right? But in the practical sense, the lift we still care about is still the lift that's straight up and down, right? This is, that's the lift that keeps our plane from falling out of the sky. And what we've done is we've taken this lift and we've just tilted it. Right, and so now we have some component of our lift that is no longer pointing straight up and down. Right, we have some component of it, and you know what? Why don't I make that a better color? Let's see something drastic. This will work. Right, uh, we have some new component that's not pointing uh, straight up and down anymore. And this is our induced drag, D prime, because this is the drag that. You know, it's it's not that it um, stuff suddenly became more draggy. It's that we had lift pointing straight up and down, and then we tilted it, 
right? We tilted our lift a little bit. And because we no longer, our lift is no longer all the way straight up and down, we have some drag component um, contributing, you know, to this L prime, right? So our L prime can basically be broken down into, um, you know what? Draw another. This angle and this angle are the same. Our lift, uh, or our, sorry, our, um, you know what? I think I'm better. Apologize, I'm kind of uh, scatterbrained right now. Um, this is our dragon induced track. So our L prime, you know, is some, uh, L prime is some vector uh, addition of our original lift and this new drag, right? And so if we want to find this new drag, um, what we're going to do, this induced drag is equal to L prime sine alpha induced, right? And then alpha induced, right? We can reference uh, this, this quantity over here is just inverse tangent of W, sorry, negative W over V infinity. Always make sure you're in the right quadrant there. This is a, maybe a job for a tan too. You know what I'm saying? All right. So these quantities are what uh, what fall out of our good God Almighty. That's all I ever want. I only ever want a rectangle. Anyway, these are the these are kind of like the important quantities that fall out of our induced drag. Right. We have this new uh, we have this new velo you know free stream velocity direction. Um, which is, you know, messing with the original direction, the original directions for lift and drag that we had before. And we're seeing a little extra drag pop out of it because of this new induced angle of attack. All right. So I'm going to take a quick pause because I actually think I'm going to break this up into two videos now that I'm halfway through it. Um, so how we analyze finite wings is with... Uh, Prandtl lifting line theorem, right? So I'll have a new video on Prandtl lifting line theorem, and you guys.